Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019 Section 5, Sweetening Your Audio Edit Exploring the Audio Tracks Alright, so up until now we've done a lot of video editing and the audio's kind of come along for the ride. But in this section we're going to take a closer look at audio editing and in this clip specifically have a focus on the audio track itself. So we've seen the video tracks, but I want to explore the audio track and the various functions you see here. There's a lot of different icons. I just want to go over all of those and kind of what they mean to us as we continue our edit. So right away, we have audio one, our first audio track, the default track. I have a second audio track, audio two, if I want to add more audio, but we'll get into some mixing later on. So first thing we want to look at is the default name is audio one. Now we're back into my multicam project here, the interview of this guy uh, talking about his career. So we have a dialogue here of his voice. Let's say I was doing a whole show about this, and I wanted all my dialogue to be on Audio 1, all my interview clips. So I'm able to change the name of my track from Audio 1. Right-click, Rename. I'll call it Interview. And let's just say on my Audio 2 track, later on, I was going to add some music. So I right-click, and I'll call this Music. Just to show you that you don't have to stick to the default names. You can rename them to make them more clear for you in your edit. So I've renamed this interview. Okay. So a couple things I want to look at here. So right away, we have this button here, M, for mute track. So say I was playing this. For 15 years. I have rated all kinds of programs, document. Mute. I mute that track. A very useful feature if I have multiple audio tracks here and I want to listen to one or two over the other, I can mute one or two at a time. So I'll unmute that. Nowadays, you're not just a video editor. Soloing means you solo the track. So if you're playing a bunch of audio tracks, you press solo, it'll only play this one track and ignore the other ones. So for example, I'm going to grab a clip from my shoot, a bus going by. I'm just going to drag it down to the timeline here. Let's just move it there expand that so this edit doesn't make much sense stylistically wise but just to show you the two different types of audio in the same program so we have my interview i have rated all kinds of programs documentaries tv series psa's commercials you can hear the bus going by so i'm gonna play that again and as i come to the clip i'm going to solo this track here all kinds of programs documentaries tv series psa's commercials and it's really great feeling to have all your ideas you could hear the change, right? Yes. So I'm going to unsolo that and do the same thing with this track. So I'm going to play it through. Did all kinds of programs, documentaries, TV series, PSAs, and the video. So that's soloing a track. You can mute a track to mute it, make it silent, or solo it to hear only this track above all other tracks, depending on the track you want to solo. Also to show you, we have, I'm just going to remove this because we'll use it later. We have this toggle track lock. Now that allows you to lock the track, hence the name. So see this diagonal set of lines going across it? That indicates the track is locked, meaning no more edits can be made to this track. I can't grab it and move the audio. Now I can unlock it if I want to continue to edit. There we go. But while it's locked, we can't do that. Now, however, with this locked, I can move the corresponding video track. So say I did that, and see what happens. I have a number here, minus 905, minus nine seconds and five frames, and then plus nine seconds and five frames. You can see that there. So what's happened is I've moved this clip out of sync from its audio by nine seconds and five frames. So anytime you see this with a corresponding audio track, that indicates that it's out of sync. So I'll just put that back. There we go. Another thing I want to show that's kind of important here is this icon, the toggle sync lock. Now, remember we had my clip here, my uh, bus going by while I was talking? Say I want to bring that into my timeline with an insert or overwrite edit. Uh, now what I did before is I just clicked and dragged it into the timeline, okay? So I was able to move it anywhere I wanted. But let's say I want to put it on video 2 and audio 2. So I've targeted my tracks. 
V1, V2, A1 to A2. This is a target. So I'm going to try and insert edit. And I think you can guess what's going to happen. So the insert edit has pushed everything down in the timeline by the duration of this clip and left a big gap here. So we don't want that. We still want to hear the subject talking with this clip over it. So I'm going to undo that. Now I could simply do an overwrite edit, which is probably the best case I want to do here anyway, and that would work fine. Programs, documentaries, TV series. But if you wanted to do an insert edit, if you toggled the sync lock, you could do an insert edit, and it acts as an overwrite edit. It keeps the sync lock of the video and the audio while you insert a new clip into the timeline. Now, I could do that also, change that back, by locking these two tracks, and that would work fine. But then I can't do any other editing. I have to keep locking and unlocking to get back and doing some editing. So, my suggestion would be if you have a track down here, kind of already edited, and you want to start adding clips on your second B roll or video two in your audio two track, I would suggest toggling the sync lock. And then you can either insert or overwrite, and you won't affect this at all, but you can still work to edit it afterwards if you want. So let's just get those out of there for now. I'm going to take the sync lock back. So the other thing we have here is this voice over record button. That allows you to directly record onto an audio track in Premiere with a microphone. So if I toggle that now, it does a pre-roll. Pre -roll. And now it's, now recording. it's recording the clip. clip. It's probably it's recording, recording what I'm saying, what saying here. here. And if I and stop. I stop. And now it's recording. We have an audio clip in the timeline. And now it's recording the clip. It's probably recording what I'm saying here. And if I stop, very cool. So that's very useful if I wanted to do a voiceover, this clip here. So say I put this clip into the timeline. All right. And I want to do a little narration for this. I'll put it on my second track. So you have about a three second pre roll when you hit this. So if I want the narration to start here, I back this up by three seconds. All right. And I hit record. Here we see, Here a, we bus see a bus driving, driving across, across the, street the street as I look, as from, I the look from the stairs. Now I had my speakers up when I recorded that, so hopefully it doesn't make too much of a feedback. But let's try that. Here we see a bus driving across the street as I look from the stairs. Not the most clever narration written, but you get the idea. Here we see a bus driving across the street as I look from the stairs. And what's great about that is you can still edit this. If it was out a little bit and you want to move it down, you can still do that. Now, I know I put it on my music track, but um, that was just an example of the naming. So that's what that microphone indicator means. And one other cool thing I want to show you is there are a couple more things. I can expand and collapse this track by doing this. If I grab it in between, see how I can adjust it, make it very tall or make it very short. The other way to do that is if you hold the Alt key and roll your mouse wheel, you can get the same result. Get very, very large, nice big waveforms. I can make it back very, very small again. Now, in here, this is the keyframe toggle. So right now it is set to clip keyframes. So that means you can add keyframes with the pen tool here, here, that'll affect the volume of the clip. Now we'll explore that a little more in depth later on, but that's when it's set to clip volume, you add keyframes to the clip. And if it's set to track keyframes, you can put keyframes right on the track, which would be independent of the keyframes you put on the clip. So say you did this, you bring the whole track volume down, but then if you move this, the volume of your clips don't change. The volume of the track remains the same. But we're going to explore that a little more in depth in a later video. So I'll just uh, get rid of those. And that's an overview of the functions of an audio track in Premiere Pro and how you can use them to enhance your audio edit as you go along.